three. It says, and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulders. So he shall open and then shall shut. And he shall shut and then shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And I want to go to Isaiah 32, 17 and 18. And it reads like this, and the work of the righteousness shall be peace and the effect of the righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Amen. Amen. I want to entitle this message, A Sure and Secret Place. All right. A sure and secret place, amen, or a safe destination, my God. Aren't you glad we have a sure and secret place in the Lord? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we can go before the Lord. Amen. I want to ask Pastor to pray. Lord, I'm asking you, God, to speak, Lord, this morning through your word. Lord, let it speak to our hearts, God. Anoint your word, God. Anoint the lips of Christ. God, speaking, Lord, we'll give you the praise and honor in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, mighty name, amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let's get down in the word of God. You all may be seated. Amen. Amen. I might teach or preach. Pastor says, Amen. Amen. I'm going to read several more scripture. You can just follow along. <laughs> Psalms 127 1 says, Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but in vain. Amen. A house symbolizes a place of safety, a place of security, a place of stability. Amen. We know a house also is a shelter, a refuge, a habitation, amen. I know many people want a, a safe place to dwell in, a place of comfort, a place where they can lay their head at night, amen. A place that will give you warmth, amen. A place that will give you comfort, a place that will give you peace, amen. When you think about a bride, amen. One thing a bride wants, amen, when she's going to marry somebody is a place to be able to relax, to be able to call it her home. She can decorate it the way she wants to decorate it, amen. amen. But she has to feel that sense of security. She has to feel that sense, amen, of stability, you can say. Right. And um, I can compare this, amen, to the Lord. A lot of times people don't understand, amen, why we got to go through what we go through. But I thank God that he's a habitation. He is yes, a secret place. He is a sure foundation, my God, in this hour. Amen. He's not going to leave us alone. He's not going to. You might feel sometimes that he's gone, that he's far from you, amen. But you can always rest if you see people in the Bible. They always found refuge, amen, in the Lord. Amen. Genesis 2.8, it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Amen. This garden was a safe habitation for Adam and Eve. Yeah. A place that God himself created, amen. amen. Come on. But somewhere down the line, we see, amen, that... They had failed the Lord, and um, they pretty much got kicked out. But it was not the first time a creature made by the Creator got kicked out. Amen. Right. The first time you read about was Lucifer when he was in heaven. Right. He got kicked out. So this was not something new to creation, amen, amen. for sin, for something, amen, that was in the heart of man that got them kicked out somewhere. 
I was reading how they pretty much disobeyed the voice of God and it's sad, amen, that animals, amen, in the garden had better sense, amen, yeah. than humanity, amen. you can say. Yeah. Amen. But ultimately, amen, animals had to follow humans, amen, because they had to be a scapegoat, a right. sacrifice, amen. Genesis 4 says, and Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt not thou be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Remember that this was his younger brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from heaven, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. Amen. Isn't it something, amen, God ever told him that he was going to drive him out? But it was just something that you can say Cain probably did on his own. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I hide. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Where, Wherefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Right. The Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built in a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Enoch means a trained one. Amen. Here we read about two brothers, amen, that brought a sacrifice unto the Lord. I truly believe, amen, that both brothers knew how to please the Lord. I truly believe, amen, Cain being the older brother knew, amen, what it should have been, amen, what the requirement should have been in the sacrifice to please the name of the Lord. He should have known, amen, how to put that sacrifice on the altar. He should have known that it should have been probably, amen, or that it should have been, amen, something that was killed, something that had to shed blood, amen. Abel didn't let the incident of the garden hinder his walk with God. Right. I'm pretty sure they both knew, amen, what had happened in the garden of Eden with their parents. I'm pretty sure they understood, amen, the hedge that God had placed him in that cherubim with that sword in the garden of Eden. But the word of the Lord says he sacrificed that which was pleasing, amen, something that was acceptable 
unto the Lord. One thing, amen, that I, that I understand from being acceptable or from doing something that was acceptable, amen, is that he understood that there was still safety in God. Even though he did not live in the Garden of Eden, even though he did not grow up in the Garden of Eden, he still knew how to please God, amen. amen. This is the type of Christian, amen, that understands, amen, does not matter what you've gone through, does not matter what you go through, does not matter what the devil stole, right. amen. You still know how to worship the Lord. You still know how to have something pleasing unto the Lord, amen, in the altar of sacrifice, my God. He did not let his circumstance hinder him. He did not let, amen, his lifestyle and what happened to his parents, amen, get him down. He did not have a negative attitude unto the Lord. He did not curse the Lord, his God. Amen. But one thing I read about Cain, amen, however, represents someone who is wroth with God. I don't really think Cain, amen, had it out for his brother. Like the Bible says, I think Cain really had it wroth, amen, with the Lord his God because that's the one who he was supposed to sacrifice unto my God. Cain represents someone that is bitter, someone that is cold, someone in church that is angry, right. someone that is lazy, right. someone that lies, amen, someone that is an excuse maker, someone, amen, that is a shortcut taker, my right. God. Someone that is carnal, someone that is envious, All right. someone that is strifeful, amen. Yeah. And if you f fall into any of these categories, amen, go ahead and say amen, because I know many times I've fallen into these categories where I wanted to do it my way. Yeah, come on. See, Cain falls into somebody, amen, that is strifeful, somebody that is a hater, right. somebody that is a deceiver, yeah. somebody that is a murderer, amen. amen. My God, somebody that knows how to knock down his fellow brethren, amen. I know we're all perfect here today, my God. Someone that is a compromiser, et cetera, et cetera, amen. Cain represents many times somebody that was wroth with God. He allowed his countenance to fall, amen. He allowed his shortcomings to fall and to be unrepented before the Lord. When God, God required, I remember I just preached something similar to this. When God requires something on the table, amen, he was wroth. And he took it out on his brother, Abel. All right. You see, one thing Cain did not understand that it was not the Garden of Eden that was in the get his relationship with God, amen. Because the word of God says that he went out from the presence of the Lord, which tells me that he could have still been in the presence of the Lord. Right. It did not matter, amen, that cherubim that, that kept him from the Garden of Eden. He could have still stayed in the presence of the Lord. Amen. He had left a safe place, a safe destination, amen, and built his own habitation. The Bible says he built his own city. He began to do it his own way. He pretty much told the Lord, amen, he didn't need him. All right, come on. That he could do it all by himself. That he could build it with his own hands because that's what he had been telling the Lord from the beginning. Yeah. I can do my sacrifice the way I want to do my sacrifice. I can worship you the way I want to worship you. Yeah. Come on. Why was Cain so wroth? Let me go back to Psalms 127. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city and the watchman walk, waketh but in vain. Amen. Cain had left a sure and secret place in the Lord. Amen. 
You see, Cain was putting his knowledge more on material gain, on things that he could do himself. He walked from the presence of the Lord. My God. He didn't allow the Lord to be his habitation. All right. You see, you might feel comfortable Cain in your own habitation built with your own hands. But the only reason you are still breathing Cain is because the Lord has allowed you to. Amen. The Lord said he's still going to protect you despite your shortcomings, despite your negative attitude towards the Lord, despite you walking away from the presence of the Lord. All right. Amen. Wow. You even name your kid the trained one. You name your city the trained one. But everything you do, amen, is trained, amen, the way you want it to be trained. Yeah. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. But Cain, you're doing it your way. You're allowing your unrepentant heart, amen, to go further and further, amen, from the habitation of the Lord. You're allowing, amen, your countenance, you're allowing your wrath to go further and further from the safe place, amen, amen. the secret place that is the Lord. Amen. We read, amen, as we read more of Genesis, that there was a kid that Adam and Eve had by the name of Seth, which was the appointed one. You see, Abel was an there to carry the lineage, amen, of Adam and Eve. So they have another kid by the name of Seth. And Seth's lineage, amen, had another kid by the same name of Enoch, amen, the trained one, who was great grandpa to Noah who built an ark. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God, amen, and he was taken up. This is the second person, amen, that, that we read in the Bible who was named Enoch, a trained one, amen. We know that somewhere down the line, his lineage, amen, showed him what it was to worship the Lord. We know, amen, that somewhere down the line, someone told him, amen, that you should love the Lord your God, amen, uh -huh. that you should only worship him somewhere down the line, that he was, amen, going to make a good sacrifice unto the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says that the Lord took him up, took him up. But then we read Noah, amen, God called Noah to build an ark. This is the second time we read again, amen, that animals had more sense than humans, my God. <laughs> we can get something, amen, from these animals, amen. But here they go, more obedient than some of the people that lived in that generation, amen. Poor animals, amen, they had to, again, be the scapegoat somewhere down the line, amen, for sin. My God. But Noah understood, amen, it's not what I built with my hands that is going to necessarily keep me safe, my God. You see, he was a little bit different than Cain, amen. It was not that ark, amen, although God instructed him to build it. But Noah understood, amen, that the Lord was going to be his sure foundation, amen. amen. That the Lord was going to really be his secret place. For the Bible says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and he walked with God, amen. amen. He was already in the safe destination, my God. He was already, amen, walking with the Lord. He understood, my God, that it was going to be the Lord who was going to be on his side. Amen. We know, amen, in the Bible, it talks about cities of refuge and places you could pretty much go to.